Hey everyone, this is Matthew Kent. Welcome to Theology on the Ground. Welcome to the inside of my car and the daily thought from my quiet time uh, here at work on my lunch break today. So uh, I do the Bible in a year, Bible reading plan, and it only goes to the first 25 days of each month so that at the end of the month you have time to, to catch up if need be. I'm all caught up. So I just um, went to a random passage and started reading. And the one I went to is Genesis chapter 1. Hugely controversial text and, you know, all these people, is it literal, is it not literal? Um, do you believe in a six-day creation? Um, but here's, you know, the, the worldview between a Christian and a non-theist is immediately evident from the, the first four words, um, first five words, and that's all I'm going to read today. Uh, it's just the first five words of the whole Bible. In the beginning, God created. In the beginning, God created. Now, if you start your worldview from the fact that there's a design and intentionality, that male and female are not just random, that the fact that a woman has a baby and that a man doesn't is not just random, uh, you're going to come to completely different conclusions than if you don't believe that. And so even you think of some of the things that are mentioned later on in Genesis about, um, you know, procreation is in fact mentioned and uh, in the creation story Genesis 2 you get the the first marriage and marriage being intimately uh, involved in God's creation of mankind um, you're gonna have have a completely different view of marriage right I, if there was no God then marriage is just kind of this social institution it's just kind of this thing that human beings sort of came up with um, if you believe that God created, and specifically in the, the Christian God, and you take the Bible as the Word of God, then marriage is intimately woven into the fabric of uh, human beings. And so procreation in general wasn't the plan for us to continue the species. Procreation within the context of marriage was the plan. And so, you know, the command not to uh, commit adultery, not to fornicate, is not some arbitrary moral commandment, but is in fact a part of the design and the way that God made things. Now, one of the reasons I bring this up right now, one of the reasons I'm thinking about it is just as I've been thinking about technology recently, and if you haven't thought about technology, you should. Technology is a good and a wonderful thing, and I'm very glad at the progress that we've made. But one of the things is, as you make progress, it becomes easier to make more progress. So the line of progress that we're on is not normal linear increase it's, it's exponential so if you were to go back 250 years ago and bring somebody into the future and show them what we can do now you would absolutely floor them right each time you go back 250 years further um, and if you were to bring somebody back up to that point so you know let's just say you know 200 years ago uh, it would be 1816 switch it to 200 because the math is easier um, bringing somebody from 1816 to now to see what we can see uh, it would absolutely just floor them bringing somebody from 1616 to 1816 would not be nearly as impressive um, and it's just going to keep getting like that so one of the things that this implies is that you know god the way he created the universe um he made it so that at the beginning of humankind, his design wasn't readily, the blueprint wasn't uh, easily read, right? So there's all kinds of things in the background in terms of, you know, cells and 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 atoms and the, the inner workings of things that we didn't have access to. Now we can see all these things. Now we can even start to manipulate all these things. And so um, when you have this kind of technological progress, crazy things start becoming an option. Designer babies and the prospect of removing, um, that's one of the things that was in the news recently. And it's still speculative, but there are researchers now who believe that they can remove women from the process of childbearing, right? So no more need to have a, a woman, to have a womb, you know, a uterus. Uh, you can have babies. So anyways, Christians need to think very carefully, you know, just because we can do something doesn't mean we should. And the hope is, you know, if you are a Christian, then really your worldview has to start with this dynamic of uh, in the beginning God created. 
So those are my thoughts for today. Uh, just keep that in the back of your mind as you're going throughout your day. In the beginning, God created everything that you look at, everything that you see. If there's a design, there's an intentionality, and there's a way that it ought to go, and there's a way that it will best go for human flourishing. Thanks so much for taking the time to listen. Board willing, I'll see you guys tomorrow.